On today's Maker Mashup, we are doing day two of our 3D printer build. Okay, so we're on day two of our 3D printer build and I wanna introduce Danny here. He is my nephew and the one that we're building this printer for. Uh, I didn't have him on the first day's video because we had a video malfunction, but I uh, wanted to introduce him. So when you see him in the videos, he's the one that's gonna be working on this 3D printer. He's actually doing all the work. All I'm doing is giving him a lot of instruction and of course shooting the video for you guys. All right, so today we're gonna to be working on our motion system for the 3D printer here. And primarily we're gonna be focusing on the Y axis. We're gonna be using these dry lens bearings uh, to attach to the printer bed. So the printer bed will slide across these here. Um, one of our viewers did have a question about the bed weight. Uh, it looks like that is about 835 grams. So comparing that uh, to other beds, it's within about 200 grams of any other bed style that I've been able to at least research on the internet. Uh, those plates on the bottom actually weigh about 200 to 300 grams. So I think we'll be okay with stopping this much mass. Uh, of course, if we don't stop that mass effectively, we'll end up with ringing and we won't know until we put this together. Uh, this is the first time that I've used this sort of bed on a movable Y axis. It has worked great for the Core XY printer and using that Core XY to just drop the bed, but of course, less motion involved. So we will see how that works out in the end. Uh, the nice thing about this printer and what we're doing with it is that Danny is able to upgrade this. And as he upgrades it, if he decides that he wants to go with a full uh, aluminum or steel plate for the bottom carriage, he can always change it and upgrade it. But we're gonna put it together with the extrusion and see how that works out for us today. All right, so we've got everything all ready here. We're gonna go ahead and get started. So uh, stick with us here, and we're gonna go through some of the assembly of the Y-axis. All right, so let's get to work. Build day two is gonna focus on the Y-axis. We're gonna start off by reviewing the parts that we need, and then we're going to add the linear guides to the bed frame. These are gonna be the pieces that actually assemble to the bed frame uh, for the rails to go through. Next, we're gonna assemble the rails to the frame and install the bed. So we'll have a complete motion system ready to go. Uh, then we're gonna assemble and install the tensioner and that'll keep our belt uh, connected. And then we're gonna also assemble and install the stepper. Once we're done, the belt will go on and we will have a complete Y axis. Let's talk about the parts we're gonna need for today. We're gonna need four dry lint bearings. You can use traditional bearings as well. We're gonna need four extrusion bearing blocks. These are 3D printed. We're gonna also need two linear rails. Those are gonna be 440 millimeters long. Then we're gonna need four rail mount brackets. Those are 3D printed. We're gonna need one tensioner assembly. Uh, we're also gonna need one idler bearing and screws to assemble that. Then we're gonna need one NEMA 17 stepper, a 3D printed stepper bracket and some screws to go along with that. And then we're gonna need one GT2 timing belt and a timing pulley. And links for that are in the description. Now I completely understand that if you're building your first 3D printer following this, you're not gonna be able to 3D print your own pieces for this. So what I'm going to offer at the end of this series is links available where you can buy the 3D printed parts directly or if you wanna buy this entire printer as a kit and follow along, I'll offer that as well. And that will be at the end of the series. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is 3D print these bearing blocks, and then you're gonna to wanna to push in the dry lint bearing. You can see Danny's already done that, and now he's taking an M5 nut and screw and simply going ahead and getting these ready to put onto the bed. Now you're gonna to wanna to drop these right into the bed frame and then you're gonna to wanna to tighten them up. Uh, they should be pointing the opposite direction. I had to actually reprint these, but we didn't wanna reshoot the video, so there's a slight difference here. But all you're gonna do is put these on and then tighten them up. Here we have the finished bed with the bearings pointing in the wrong direction 
but again, when you print this out yourself, you'll see they just simply go the other direction and a little bit easier to attach. Once you have all four installed, we're gonna move on to the next step, which is getting the linear rails on. You can see here, Danny is measuring. Now what we did was we measured the center points of the bed where the rails fit through. So center to center to the center of where these brackets go right to the 2040 extrusion. This doesn't have to be 100% precise because you'll need to tighten this up once the rails are in place, but you want to get a pretty good spot to where they're very close to the permanent location. And you're going to want to do this on all four sides. Once the blocks are in place, all you need to do is slide the rods into each one of the blocks. Now this rod is a little bit short. The description does have the proper 440 millimeter length for these rods. Once you get all the rods installed, then just give it a little bit of push and make sure that it's sliding freely against the rails. And there's Danny giving it a good thumbs up. Our next job here is gonna to be to install the stepper motor. We're gonna need a few different screws for this and we're gonna need the stepper and you're also gonna need the timing gear from the belt. All of these are linked in the description. So you're gonna to wanna to mark the center of the extrusion of where you're going to install the stepper motor bracket and you're gonna only use the two bottom screws of the bracket when you mount it to the extrusion. Once you have that complete, you're gonna to wanna to just install all four screws of the stepper motor to connect it to the bracket. On the shaft of the stepper motor, you'll find a flat spot. You're gonna to wanna to match that up to one of the grub screws on the gear and just screw that in. The flat spot helps the gear from turning while it's in use. And once you get this one in, just do the same for the other one, tighten that up, and your stepper motor is all installed. Now we move on to the tensioner. You can see we've already got the idler pulley installed. This just takes a couple of washers, a nut and a bolt, and that attaches to the 3D printed part. And links to everything are in the description. Now you're gonna to wanna to mount this opposite of the stepper and between the two linear rails. This goes on pretty simply. You just tighten it down. And then one note on this is that you may have to move this left or right once you get the belt on there. You want the belt to be completely straight, but it does take a little bit of adjustment after it's in place to make sure that you're 100% straight. The final part of the idler is to just install an M3 screw and then you're going to use this M3 screw to control the tightness and tension the belt once you have the belt in place. The final step is to install the belt. What you're going to use is a small little bonding plate here and that's linked in the description. And then you just use a couple of the same T-nuts that we've used everywhere else. And once you've looped that belt all the way through, you zip tie it and attach it with this bonding plate. Then once that's complete, your next step is just going to be to trim off the excess of the belt and you'll have one complete Y axis ready for action. So that completes day two. As you can see here, we now have the proper 440 millimeter length rods in place. And the other part that we have here are the linear bearings uh, that look correct. So we're all set here with our Y axis. So thanks again for watching this video. If you liked it, make sure you mash that like button and don't forget to subscribe so you can catch all the rest of these videos and feel free to check out our Patreon page if you enjoy the work that we're doing here. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you guys next time.